Hello, uh, welcome to the inaugural episode of Monotone Strategy. Um, I decided to film this episode because I was reading the newspaper recently and saw a headline about Disney and how the pandemic is rewriting their playbook. Uh, essentially, it's arguing that their corporate strategy is not working as well as it used to work. And in fact, uh, it's arguing that it may be uh, causing problems for them. This was really interesting to me because the Disney case is one of the uh, most well-known and widely used cases in corporate strategy. And if that uh, if the lessons from that case are no longer appropriate, that is a really big deal. I teach corporate strategy, so that would affect me. Uh, so I was really curious uh, about what was going on there and decided to dig in uh, with a little more detail. Uh, so is their corporate strategy still viable? Have the lessons of the past been invalidated by this pandemic? Let's find out. So the premise of this Wall Street Journal article that I read is that uh, the Disney corporate strategy is no longer working and in fact may be causing troubles for Disney during this pandemic. Uh, there was a number of things that they used to highlight that, uh, the problems that Disney's facing right now. Uh, there were a number of shocks that were highlighted. Uh, so for example, filming of films uh, is no longer possible because of the pandemic. Uh, so a lot of movies that were going to be released down the road uh, have not been finished. Also, a lot of theaters have been closed, which has forced Disney to cancel or postpone, sometimes indefinitely, uh, movies that were scheduled to be released in theaters. Uh, there's also causing, uh, the pandemic's also causing problems for Disney's theme parks, not surprisingly. Uh, a lot of those have either been shut down temporarily or are now operating at reduced capacity. So all of these are shocks to the Disney corporate strategy. On top of all of that, uh, ESPN has also been affected. Uh, that's another uh, business owned by Disney. And with the cancellation of a lot of live sports, uh, that uh, viewership on that channel, uh, which has long been a very profitable channel, has really been severely affected. So these are examples of many different shocks that have affected Disney. Uh, clearly, it's not great that all of these are happening, but the premise of this article is that their previous playbook is actually not working and is working against them right now. And the fact that they're having a number of financial shocks to different businesses at the same time is not the same thing as that corporate strategy not working for them. Uh, so um, let's think about what was presented as evidence in this article and whether or not the premise of this article, uh, which is that this uh, playbook is no longer effective, is actually true. Uh, so uh, it is true that there have been ripples throughout the Disney enterprise. Uh, for example, some movies have had to be canceled uh, or postponed indefinitely in terms of theatrical release. Uh, so that has really affected uh, th that part of their business. Uh, that's not really unique to Disney though. Uh, any other studio that's making films and releasing them to theaters is facing a lot of the same challenges. Uh, so. Um, it's actually been so extreme that a number of theaters have delayed reopening because so many uh, movie studios are delaying the release of very major movies. So this is not something that's unique to Disney. In fact, the article actually highlights some examples where Disney is able to use their corporate portfolio to get around this. Uh, for example, some movies have been released directly to Disney+. Plus. Uh, so uh, that's an example of using their synergies between these businesses and taking a movie that um, would have been delayed indefinitely if it had to be released directly to theaters and instead releasing it through another one of their businesses and really taking advantage of the pandemic to capture a lot of market share in that business. Uh, so that uh, actually seems like a positive synergy that we're still seeing. Um, 
in terms of some of their other businesses, uh, ESPN, for example, has been suffering. Uh, the article highlighted how ESPN has actually been able to work with uh, the Disney parks. Both of these have been negatively affected by this pandemic, but by working together, they were able to negotiate with the NBA and the NBA Players Association to have live sport, sports uh, performed at Disney's resort. And uh, that allows them to have complete control over isolation and quarantines. And by having these two businesses working together, they're able to create a unique solution that may allow for the uh, continuation of live sports that otherwise might have been canceled. Uh, so that's another example of positive synergies here. Uh, ESPN has also started showing some uh, telecasts of concerts that have been previously recorded. Uh, so again, they're using uh, content that's been filmed for one purpose or at other times and releasing it through uh, multiple media here, in this case, taking concerts to ESPN and creating synergistic value there. Uh, so again, it really seems like uh, there are positive synergies that are working and are protecting Disney at this time. Uh, of course, that isn't possible with every business. Uh, so to take another example of a Disney film, uh, Black Widow was scheduled to be released to theaters. And Disney is also well known for their strong merchandising. So they made a lot of merchandise and sold that to retailers. That movie was postponed indefinitely, but all of this merchandise was already in stores and is being sold uh, without the film to support the release of those toys. Um, the article mentions that a lot of those toys are being left unsold or being sold at a heavy discount. This could seem like a negative synergy. Uh, perhaps they're taking on a little more financial risk with the creation of those toys themselves, as opposed to just licensing the rights to somebody else. Uh, but it's not super clear to me that that's a strong negative uh, synergy between these business units. Um, especially given all the value that's been created over many, many years of merchandising. Uh, the fact that the release of toys for this one movie, uh, this one period of time happened to be mistimed uh, because of the pandemic uh, doesn't seem like a major concern to me. Uh, so kind of looking over all of the evidence, uh, yes, there's been a lot of economic shocks that have affected Disney's businesses, but in terms of how they're using their corporate strategy to create value at this time, uh, it really seems like they're continuing to uh, go along with that and continuing to create value uh, despite everything that's going on in the world, uh, rather than uh, suffering even more than their competitors because of this.